Hey, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. We're gonna cook some of our harvest again. I got a bunch of dried cow peas, so let's go. The cow pea, cow peas. That's a big family of legumes, and they're also known as southern peas. You might know particular varieties by the name black-eyed pea, purple hole pink eye, uh, white zipper cream, but there are dozens if not hundreds of different cultivars of this particular kind of pea and I love them. I love growing them in the summer because they'll grow in poor soil, they'll grow through the heat and they'll put on a good crop for you. I like to pick them when they're uh, when the, 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 the shells are just starting to get a little bit leathery and I let them air dry and uh, if you keep them picked they'll keep putting on these peas until well until fall comes. They're a great source of protein they amend your soil really well, the entire plant is edible, and they'll grow in virtually any lousy soil you have. Um, cow peas are essential in Africa, uh, where people ha have to grow in, in lousy soil, and, and there's all kinds of wonderful cow peas out there. I have a video about cow peas, I'll link it up there, and you can go watch that. But we're going to cook these up. Uh, unfortunately, I got, I got started before I could show you what they looked like as dry peas. I'll try to find some footage from before. But uh, yeah, these things, they're going to be delicious. Here's our cow peas. They were dried and have been in storage since the summer harvest. This is the Holstein variety. And they've been soaking overnight. I gave them a soak in filtered water to plump them up drained it off and soaked them again so about 24 hours of soaking and they're ready to go in the pot so we're going to add some onions going to add some diced tomatoes for some uh, uh, skinned diced tomatoes and some garlic so let's chop those up these are a couple of tomatoes from my garden and I had fro uh, they, they've been frozen and so they're just now starting to thaw out but because they were frozen and now thawed the skin comes right on off you can just peel it right off as if it had been blanched that makes it real convenient we want this uh, savory tomato juice in our in our liqueur I'm going to add a generous portion of pig juice, bacon grease. Gotta have that in any kind of southern uh, bean recipe. Gonna add some chicken stock. Use stock instead of water if you've got stock on hand. It's just better all, all around. I've got a little bit of stock on hand. I'm gonna have to top it off with water. But just this little stock or broth, that's gonna, that's gonna help a lot. We're going to top this off and bring it to a rolling boil. Here's what we've got. We've got our beans in the bottom, we've got our onions. I've thrown the garlic in a hole. We can fish it out later like a bay leaf uh, if you don't like to eat garlic. Uh, we've got some chunks of ham that we've salvaged off an old ham bone and Phoebe. And we've got our big dollop of uh, bacon grease and our tomato. So we'll top this up with water and bring it to a rolling boil and start adding our spices. All right, we've got salt and pepper. I've got some jalapeno powder that I made from my garden. Put a little dash of that in there as well to give it some pep. I'm gonna put just a touch of Tony Satchery's Creole seasoning in there. Just a little touch. I've got some pieces of ham, like I said, off of a ham bone. And that ham will be delicious. It will contribute to the overall flavor. Now there's a bit of ham right there. Uh, my garlic is just in their hole. We'll fish it out at the end if it doesn't disintegrate. All these onions and tomatoes ought to disintegrate and become one with the juice. So we'll bring this up to a good rolling boil and let it boil for about five minutes and then we'll simmer. Bring it to a, a low boil, a, 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 just over a simmer, and we'll let it sit there, well, maybe four hours. There can be any number of variations on how you cook these southern peas whether they're black eyes, purple hole pink eyes, whether they're these Holstein variety, whatever cow pea you have, they make a great dried bean. They store virtually forever when they're dry. 
and all you have to do is rehydrate them and then boil them and boil them and boil them let them simmer for four five hours if you have it sometimes even more and I like to do it southern style that means big giant dollop of bacon grease or some sort of a ham bone in there my ham bone that I have is a little bit too big for the pot and for the amount of peas that I have so I can't put that whole thing in there it just isn't gonna work but uh, I'd like to get that marrow boiled out of that bone but yeah you can do that too uh, you can spice these up any way you want um, traditionally we just put some bacon and some salt and pepper and a bunch of black eyes or purple holes together and boil them but uh, I'm adding some onions some garlic and a little bit of tomato and some jalapeno powder and a little bit of Creole seasoning and a few garlic cloves and this is also a traditional southern way to cook these kind of peas is to spice them up a bit so should be good now we just have to wait this is what we're looking for when you boil vegetables especially beans and actually pretty much when you boil any food impurities will rise to the surface as this foam and what we're going to do is we're going to let this boil until all the food particles settle down and then we'll skim the foam off the top perfectly edible but you know it's just kind of a cosmetic thing we'll let this boil for another five minutes or so and turn the heat down all right it's been a while we're still simmering and you can see these beans and all the stuff in here you cannot distinguish the tomatoes or the onions they're all broken down now with a dark cowpea like this your liqueur your juice your bean juice is going to turn brown like that and that's good whenever you have a vegetable that's colored like purple or blue you got lots of antioxidants in there and these beans are very dark and you can see they've stained this juice a very dark brown now of course you're going to break down those antioxidants a lot but anytime you have color in your vegetables you're still going to get some residual effects now check this out it's even colored our ham our ham is not nice and dark almost black there but uh, all these uh, flavors and the herbs and the onions and the garlic and the beans they've all melded together and we're just about ready always add a little bit more stock or water if you think you need to so you don't come back here and find that you've burnt your beans as Johnny Cash says look at them beans <laughs> all right so check this out look how dark that ham has turned it's so flavorful everything in here is so flavorful and what you want to see at the end is almost a gravy look at that it's nice and thick it's thickened up a bit you can't see any bit of tomato in there I can't find an onion I can't even find my garlic cloves actually they're in there somewhere but they've probably disintegrated but when they get cooked down like that they're almost those beans are almost falling apart that is a southern style southern pea right there delicious I mean hook your peepers on that and tell me that's not gonna make your mouth water okay so here are our cow peas and I'm gonna do a taste test look at this deep dark brown from that purple and white pea yeah this is gonna be good my wife already approved let's see mmm wow that's really good cow peas give you that kind of earthiness that comes from a southern pea and all those herbs in there really make that uh, really make it like a stew almost this is really good um, if you get the opportunity to grow these cow peas or if you can find some purple hulls or some fresh black eyes or some zipper creams get them man throw a ham bone in there throw some bacon grease in there and just boil them until they're done but if you can grow some of these different varieties like this Holstein you can get a nice deep dark color um, I've grown some called gray speckled palapies in the past you can get some that are clay colored kind of a red clay color there are all different varieties you can grow and they're really delicious so now when I do cooking videos I almost never leave you a recipe what I want you to do when you cook is learn how to kind of get everything by feel um, most folks want a recipe that tells you you need one cup of this one pound of that a teaspoon of this a teaspoon of that um, that's not how I cook and um, I suggest you get a, um, a feel for uh, making food just kind of 
organically, especially if you have a garden. Because what's going to happen is, well, sometimes your garden is going to give you an abundance of one thing, but you're not going to have that other thing you need. You know, I've, I've got an abundance of rosemary right now, but I don't have an abundance of sage or thyme. Um, you know, everything I've put by is, is dried and, well, I've got abundances in the garden of things I can use. I had an abundance of cowpeas this year. I've got plenty of onions on hand. I had the jalapeno pepper powder that I made. Tons of jalapenos. So I'm going to use it in this recipe. And just kind of build flavor profiles according to what you like. Uh, if you need a recipe to cook by, you're just going to get somebody else's vision of food. You can, you can build your own artistic, almost artistic-like uh, recipes by just doing things according to feel. And that takes a while to get to that point, so just cook. Cook your food. Start off with something basic, but cook. There's a book, and I forgot the author's name, Robert Capone. I'll link it. One of the best books I've ever read on cooking. It's called, it's called The Wedding Supper of the Lamb, and I've currently loaned my uh, book out to my future son-in-law, so I don't have a copy of it to show you, but I'll put it here on the screen. This book will teach you about cooking from the heart. How to cook things without having, you know, being a slave to a recipe. Uh, you get to, just to know certain things about cooking and principles that you need to know, and you can cook anything. So, yeah, that's how we cooked these cowpeas today, and man, they're so good. I can't believe how good they are. Even my wife loves them, and my wife is a is a She's hard to cook for, but there we go, cow peas. Look at that. This is a success. I'm going to leave you now so I can enjoy my beans. Thank you for joining me on Black Umbo Southern Gardening. Hope you enjoy the cooking videos. If you do, please subscribe to our channel, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.